In this video, we're going to beef up our cybersecurity posturing on our Apache website with the help of a web application firewall called Mod Security using the OWASP core rule set, an intrusion prevention module called Fail to Ban, as well as a DOS and DDoS protection module called Mod Evasive. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, as always, before we get started, we want to update our repository and our packages. So that'll be sudo apt update double ampersand sudo apt upgrade tack y. And we'll go ahead and let that finish. Now, since we're installing three packages here, mod security, the web application firewall is a little bit more complex to install and configure than mod evasive and fail to ban. So we're gonna start with those two first. So in order to install mod evasive, we can just copy and paste this command. We're gonna sudo apt install lib apache2 mod evasive tack y, and we'll let that finish. Okay, and then we're gonna use the t command to copy this configuration file. So you can just highlight, and I'll explain it in a minute. So you can just highlight this code and hit enter. And then you can open up this configuration with sudo nano. And here we see the configuration uh, was actually entered. And it looks like, so this is the default. So we should probably get rid of that. Now, this is, in, this is the one that I use, and this is actually really restrictive because I have such a small site. I don't have a lot of visitors. 99% of the visitors to my website are malicious. Uh, so we have a page count of one and a site count of 10. That does, include, that does not include static links like, um, you know, uh, icons or, um, you know, static files like images that WordPress or your website will pull. Uh, so this means one IP address can access one page uh, and 10 pages on the site in total over an interval of one second uh, for both the page and the site. Again, this is incredibly restrictive. Uh, and don't forget to um, whitelist your IP address uh, because once we install fail to ban, you very easily uh, could ban yourself and that would not be a good thing. So let's go ahead and, and let's whitelist ourselves. And then we're gonna go ahead and there are the, um, and I have written here what each one of these things does. So if you wanna modify anything in here, uh, by all means, go ahead. So we're gonna overwrite this file. And that's pretty much it for the configuration for uh, Mod Evasive. So now what we want to do is we want to install fail to ban. We're going to install and configure fail to ban, but we're not going to start it. We're not going to start the service until after we've installed the web application firewall. So let's sudo apt install fail to ban tack y. And then what we need to do is create a local jail and then install this configuration. So let's create a local jail and I'll go ahead and explain what the configuration is here. So essentially, Apache malicious and bad requests are the names of the filters that we're gonna be using. And so this here, this basically just tells uh, fail to ban to start uh, looking looking here for this config and then once it gets to these other brackets it'll move on to the next one and say okay this is also what i'm looking for right so we're going to name ours apache malicious and this is telling this log path right here is telling fail to ban what to monitor and we have to set up the filter rules for that so this jail essentially gives fail to ban directions of where to pull the filters and what logs to monitor before it makes its decision. So we're just gonna uh, copy and paste this into our local jail and we'll overwrite that file. And then what we need to do is we're gonna create, so actually if you come, if you get into the fail to ban filter dot D, you should see all of these other rules here. We're just gonna add a couple, okay? So we're gonna create this Apache malicious 
configuration. And we start here with the definition of fail regular expression, and then we also are going to whitelist our IP address. So let's start there first. So let's whitelist our IP. And you can also whitelist, you know, filter rule. Like if you see a common, uh, if you see like something common in your access log or your error log that fail to ban will catch, you can actually whitelist it so you don't ban it. So for right now, we're just gonna we're just gonna whitelist our our IP address. Now, basically, th what this filter is doing is, you know, fail to ban comes here and it says, okay, I want to check the Apache malicious filter rules. Uh, I'm going to be looking in the error log for this, and Apache malicious is what I'm going to be looking for. And this is going to be Apache malicious. So these are our filter rules. And essentially, you'll see when we set it up. But in our error log with mod evasive and mod security, you'll see this evasive 20 error with a PID and then a client host with a PID and then client denied by server configuration. So this is also the language that it's looking for. Uh, you'll see something similar with mod security and then this access compat error. I believe it's uh, compatible maybe. Uh, but it is basically anything that's not caught by mod security so like or um, mod evasive so if you remember in the previous video when we restricted access to the WP admin and login pages and when we look at my server logs you'll see people were trying to access my PHP admin you'll get an access compat error for that that uh, mod security uh, may not pick up right uh, so we have our IP whitelisted and we have our regular expressions ready to go. So let's overwrite that file. This is for malicious and you don't have to do this next one. I only do it because like I said, I have a, wall, a small website uh, with only a few pages. There's no search box or anything. There's no user input. So in order to get a bad request, you pretty much have to be messing around on my site. So what I like to do is I just create a configuration that is going to catch 400 requests and 400 is the response code of your server that basically says uh, it's it's called a bad request but essentially your server doesn't know how to interpret it and says you gave me this information and actually what we can do is after we whitelist my IP address I'll actually show you an example of a bad request and something that the server just you know does not understand here so let's see I want to make sure okay so we have uh, mod evasive and fail to ban both configured let's take a look at um, let's take a look at my access logs so we'll do sudo cat Etsy Apache 2 no we're in log sorry var log Apache 2 let's do access dot log and we'll do one so let's go ahead and ba -ba -ba. So this is a great example right here. This is probably some kind of hex. Um, they probably are using uh, Python or some other uh, automate, um, some other tool like curl maybe. That's not following redirects obviously. Uh, but they'll basically give the server a request that it doesn't understand. And so you'll get this 400, uh, this 400 request. You'll actually see a lot of requests in here. Here's a good one that mod evasive will pick up once we have it configured is this dot env for environment. You'll see dot git config dot aw. Here's dot git config. This is a really popular one as well. Um, you'll also see, let's see, a lot of 403s. If you recall earlier, we restricted our website to only using HTTP, HTTP version 1.1 um, and we forbid 1.0. Um, uh, usage. So let's see. Someone's trying to get a shell command on on this website. You'll see. Let's see. I wonder if there are any connect requests in here. Um, but a lot of get, a lot of post. Let's see here. I mean, look at this. They're just. Um, if you're familiar, I'm not sure if this is actually as if this is actually what what uh, they're doing. But if you're familiar with a term called fuzzing, it's not, it seems like what they're trying to do is just enter random things to see if they can get the server 
uh, to kind of malfunction or, or spit out some information about it so you can start working from there. So that's one of the reasons why we want to install uh, mod security because it'll flag this. Uh, well, I mean, I'm already flagging it as a 400, but it might flag this request as like, uh, this doesn't make sense or this looks malicious. So we'll ban that. Let's see if you can see they're trying to get uh, access to AWS config or credentials. So, I mean, no real legitimate requests to this website. And that's essentially uh, what we are trying to protect against. So let's go ahead and install our web application firewall. Um, uh, however, uh, a little bit of a background. Um, as you can see here, uh, end of life support for mod security is ending July 1st of next year. And essentially, mod security was originally created for Apache, but they kind of stopped updating it after version 2 for Apache and so um, unfortunately with the new OWASP core rule set uh, the old mod security version doesn't really work um, however a, a contributor to mod security named Irvin uh, I'm not going to butcher that name. I, I don't know how to uh, pronounce it. Um, but he basically wrote an article over at Digital Wave. And this is just an excerpt of that article because they do a couple of other things. This is uh, specific to Apache. Um, so we are going to be uh, installing an unofficial repository for mod security that works with the new OWASP core rule set. So basically we can, first we have to install the original. Um, oh, also, uh, the, what we're doing here is we're installing the original and then updating it with the new repo. So it's kind of like an unofficial branch, right? Um, it's not like completely built from scratch or anything like that. It's built on top of, of the old uh, version. So we'll install lib Apache 2 mod security and just select yes to overwrite these rules. Okay. And then we are gonna set up a remote repository here. And then we are going to add the repo or pull and add the repo key. And then we're gonna add the, we're going to add these digital wave repos to our sources list file. And then what we wanna do is we wanna verify they're actually in there. So this is going to be Etsy apt sources list DW modsec.list. So let's sudo cat. And here we have uh, basically when we do sudo apt upgrade and update next, it will check uh, these, repo, these uh, repos or this repo, sorry. So now we want to set up a policy. Actually, I'm wondering, no, I don't have that. I've run through this a few times already, so I just want to make sure that I actually don't already have this file. So let's check. Let's see here. So that's sudo cat. And here we go. So our policy is set up. And now when we do sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade, we should see uh, the digital wave repository being checked uh, to upgrade our mod security installation. So let's sudo apt upgrade double ampersand sudo apt I got that backwards upgrade tack why let's fix that and I cannot see my cursor update here we go and digital wave all right so we are looking great here this may ask us to overwrite um, install new files it did not okay that's cool um, so you can actually come check out these CRS rules if you want. So let's clear that. So these are going to be all the rules that we have. And when we install our core rule set uh, from OWASP, there's going to be a ton of them. So what we're going to do here is mod security comes with a recommended configuration that we're just going to copy into a configuration. And you'll see down here what we do is when we use when we include these um, 
uh, configurations, uh, this is basically what we're going to pull from, right? Uh, when we configure it in the, our security two configuration. So what we want to do is we will copy that sample or this recommended configuration. And then we need to open it up and it should be in detection only mode. And what we want to do is we want to turn uh, the security rule engine to on. So we set that to on. Then we control overwrite that. And now what we want to do is we want to download the core rule set. And this is the whole reason why we updated mod security because this newer version of the rule set uh, won't work with the old uh, mod security. So let's go ahead and download the zip file. I believe uh, Ubuntu doesn't come with uh, zip, uh, unzip installed. So let's sudo apt install unzip. And let's just go ahead and highlight this. And so you'll see we have this zip file downloaded in our home folder. And so now unzip is installed. So let's unzip this. And now we have our core, core rule set. So this core rule set is what we're going to be uh, copying. Let's do rules. These rules, this is what we're going to be uh, copying into our mod security folder so it knows uh, what to pull. So we're going to take this, this uh, folder with all of these rules and we are going to copy that into our Etsy mod security uh, folder. And now we want to get into our mod security, our main mod security config. Well, not our main configuration, um, but we just want to make sure that we're including uh, all of the um, configuration files. So it's include optional. This will be Etsy mod security slash asterisk uh, dot. That's what we have. Mod security. Did I spell that wrong? I did. Okay. Uh, and I believe this will be what CRS we will have CRS slash dot configuration. Um, we, the OWASP mod security, we, that's what we just moved over. So it's going to be in Etsy mod security. And then the rules, this is for OWASP. This is what we just moved over. Um, asterisk dot configuration. Okay. I think we're looking good here. So let's overwrite that file. And now we need to create, so this includes CRS configuration and con, uh, include these rules uh, configuration. I believe there's another one. Did we do something else here? Ba -ba -ba. So this main configuration, essentially what we do, if we create this whitelist, uh, this configuration file will be included when mod security looks for configuration files. And so let's do sudo nano etsy mod security whitelist configuration. This is what we're creating. And we want to whitelist our IP and we're going to use this syntax here. And let me grab my IP address. And again, this is just in case. Now, uh, we want all of this to be the same where it says public IP you use to access the site. Let's, ooh, uh, no log. Let's not do that. Okay, so let's match our IP and let's whitelist us. Great, there we go. So this whitelist configuration will be included and you can go back to your mod security uh, folder to make sure it is there. CD Etsy mod security. And here we have our whitelist dot configuration. So that's great. Uh, now we wanna enable uh, the module security too. So this is sudo. A2 for Apache 2 enable mod security 2. So we'll enable that. And now we need to jump into our WordPress SSL configuration and turn on. I'm, I think you can put this anywhere, but I'm just going to put it above the rewrite engine and we'll turn on uh, SEC for security. Uh, rule engine and set that to on and then we'll overwrite the file 
and none of the uh, none of this will will take effect until we restart Apache. Uh, so let's go ahead and restart Apache, and if we've configured everything appropriately, uh, we should not have any issues, no failures. Cross your fingers, and we have an issue. Let's check out. Let's see what we have. A little bit of troubleshooting. Hopefully, I can get this done quickly. Let's see. Um, hmm. There seems to be a problem with my whitelist configuration. Okay, so let's see here. Mod security. Let's do sudo nano uh, whitelist.configuration. SEC rule remote a uh, remote address. I thought that was correct. Huh. Okay, give me a second. Okay, um, it looks like uh, I had a misspelling here. It should be ADDR for address. So let's do uh, sudo nano etsy mod security uh, whitelist.configuration and let's change this to a DDR. We'll control and overwrite that file. And now let's restart Apache. Hey, there we go. Okay. So now I believe we should be able to enable the Security 2 module, or if it's already enabled, it already is. We've already enabled or turned on the Security Rule Engine uh, and added that to our SSL configuration. We just restarted Apache. So. <laughs> so what we're going to do, let's look at the sudo systemctl status fail to ban. So currently it is loaded, but it is not active. Um, well, it says failed, but um, so if we go, if we take a look at, let's do, <laughs> we've whitelisted my IP address. So what we're going to do here, let's, let's take a look at our error log. Okay, so let's take a look at our error log. So the sudo cat var log apache2 error dot log dot one. Uh, sudo cat var log apache2 error dot log. Okay, so if we're looking at our error log here, let's see, we notice, what do we have? Let's see what we find. So this is just telling us that our mod security has been enabled on now. Here's a great example. So security to error. We had this client, I believe this was me earlier when I was configuring this, but you have um, client PID with this IP address, mod security access denied. And if you remember from our fail to ban rules, our filter rules, um, this will be monitored by fail to ban. And once it sees this, um, it will uh, ban the associated IP address. So let's see. Um, I don't see any mod evasives here yet for access to content areas yet. Um, but anyway, so it seems like everything is working. So what we want to do now finally is we want to enable fail to ban. So that's sudo sudo systemctl uh, enable fail to ban. And this will enable it on startup. So if we have to reboot the server, and let's do sudo systemctl uh, start. It may already be started. Uh, fail to ban. Uh, let's do. Let's check the status. Systemctl status fail to ban. And we're loaded and we are active. So now, what we can do is let's. check. So that IP address was, well, let's get another one because I don't want to ban my home IP address. So let's see, what is my IP? 43. Let's check it. Okay. So let's see if we're working. Uh, oh, URL not found. Interesting. Forbidden. I don't have access. So hopefully if fail to ban is working properly, that will show up in our error logs. And let's see. I still have access to the site. Um, maybe it gave me the same IP address. Did it give me the same IP? Let's go to 
right, let's go to San Jose. Let's try this now. There we go. Now I'm forbidden. Great. So we're working. So hopefully, um, I can try to visit the site, and I now I don't even have access to the server. It's denied. Uh, so that's great. We got it working. We have fail to ban running. Um, that's monitoring our error logs, and we have mod security and mod evasive that are basically catching those errors for bad requests or DOS or DDoS attacks. And fail to ban is monitoring the error logs and our access logs and banning IP addresses, and it's all automated once you configure it. So that's great. Um, I'm really excited about the next video because I'm going to get started with the elk stack so we can actually ingest the logs and then visualize them. So that should be really great, and uh, I hope this tutorial was informative, and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.